Hitch. All right. We are Jay and Estela Coches, and we are from New York. And that would be my cue to start over. Wait, 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 wait. My nose oh, is running. Come on. <laughs> okay, that, that's it, that's it. Stop. <laughs> we are Jay and Estela Coches, and we are from New York. This past year, we volunteered in Texas and in Dominica. We are traveling around the country on Dali, and we are talking to people about hope and inspiration. We are featuring people that are making a difference in their communities, and we are covering all the 50 states. So while passing through Florida, we stopped at Panama City. We were able to talk to some of the volunteers, some of the staff, and even some of the beneficiaries of the project there. And this is what they share with us about their experiences with the All Hands and Hearts. That's it. That might have been the best. So we made it here. We're in Florida. We're going to check out All Hands and Hearts. They've been uh, helping people out after Hurricane Michael came through and destroyed some houses. Uh, and so we're going to check out what they do. What has been your biggest impression since you've been involved with All Hands and Hearts? I see a lot of um, situations that before might have looked nearly impossible as a little bit more doable just because that's what All Hands does every day. They make the impossible possible. The uh, willingness to teach, I think, is, is, is amazing. I think young people today like miss out on all those old skills that we've built along, you know, through our ages, you know, you've le you learn all these things and they have the opportunity to learn that through other people and the age differences, so it complements each other so well um, that we can come together and the older people can be taught by the younger people as far as like, um, you know, maybe technology or whatever, but uh, also, you know, just come back and the older people can say, hey, well, this is how you hang drywall, and this is how you pull a tractor, and this is how you do, you know, whatever. Um, but just being able to share those skills and, and work together, it's just it's a pretty incredible experience. One of the great things about All Hands is they train you, so I think everyone here, um, especially on this project, has probably been here at least to one other All Hands project, and maybe they came in, you know, unskilled, and now, you know, All Hands, one of the great things is they like to train their volunteers, so they have, you know, they train them on, you know, safe um, practices, mucking and gutting, rebuilding, chainsaw, and so then they, they develop this alumni network that they can call people who now they know they have the skills, they can call them for the next disaster. So I think that's one of the really big things that they do is, is they make sure their volunteers are stay engaged after they leave so that they can come back to, you know, a third, fourth, fifth project, and then they really have those skills now that are, like, really necessary. The organization isn't afraid to push someone out of their comfort zone, whether it's your sleeping quarters, sometimes not so great, sometimes better. Um, sometimes it's the food. Like Some people are very strict in how they eat. They don't like meat or they don't, um, they don't like certain types of things, but having the communal cooking pushes people beyond their bound, uh, boundaries. Um, and then I think also learning, like we had a guy today who had no idea how to use an uh, impact driver. And that was his first time how to use it. So um, pushing people out of their comfort zones learning is, I think, a huge thing that All Hands does well. And I think that's why it's good for people to come. I'm an introvert, so these kind of situations are a little overwhelming for me, especially I came in by myself, so I didn't know anyone. Um, so it was a bit overwhelming at first, and I'd also never been in a disaster zone before. Um, and the keys were hit pretty hard. And so driving by these three piles that were huge and then thrown into an environment where I didn't know anyone and you're living in a dorm with a bunch of people and sharing communal stuff. Um, it, was, it was a lot at first, but the love was like, it was instant. It was a very welcoming environment. Um, I never once felt uncomfortable, even in such uncomfortable circumstances. Um, I always felt just a lot of love. I, guess. I was with a guy named Casey, um, 
and we were assessors, so we just drove around all day. Basically, we were in a car for eight hours together every day, six days a week, um, and we just we formed this like weird, kind of crazy bond that you know I've I've known this guy for a grand total of maybe a year and a half. Of that year, I've spent maybe three months with him, but like if I were to get married, he's gonna be like one of my groomsmen, you know, like he's, it's, you just get these really like quick, intense relationships. Um, and I think that's what I, that's what I come out of every project with, um, you know, like this, I feel like I've known this guy my whole life, where in reality, we just, you know, we just spent like maybe a month, two months together. I've only been here for a short period of time, um, but I do think that just this little bit of experience makes me immensely more confident and also... You know, I just see myself coming back, if not just to this project, but to other ones, you know. Um, I think that really my small experience here planted a seed that will probably, you know, I see a lot of people here who sort of caught the volunteer bug, you know, and I understand it now, whereas before I guess I really did. It's, um, it's, it's the homeowner. It's, um knowing that like I'm being ripped out of my own bubble. I feel like I've lived a very fortunate life. And I'm even fortunate enough to try to give back to people who I don't want to call like less fortunate than me, but are in different positions. Um, and to try to do so in a professional way without just like falling apart and feeling so hopeless. That's actually the hardest thing about the job. Wow. See, I see my mother's eyes in a lot of houses that I go to. Wow. What makes you come back? It's just, it's so, it's so easy to volunteer with, with all hands and hearts. Um, it's a great community. They make it, you know, as long as you can get yourself down here, um, you know, they'll provide you housing, food. You don't have to pay a fee, which is a lot of volunteer organizations. You have to pay a fee, which is understandable. They have to run, you know, their operations. Um, but it's just so easy to come here. You can come here for a couple days, uh, a couple months, you know, if you want. Um, and you just meet a whole bunch of different people that are all in different kind of like aspects in their life where, you know, different ages come from different backgrounds. Um, and everyone's here for a slightly different reason, but, you know, mostly we are here to help homeowners, um, but it's just a lot of different and interesting people. The way the homeowners respond, I mean, that's uh, it's a big thing. What makes me come back to All Hands and Hearts is um, the, the relationships that I build, um, not just with um, the volunteers, but with the homeowners and the people that we're helping. Um, it's a real genuine connection. I think there's something very special that all Hands community is a self-selected community. So the people who choose to come to All Hands all have a very special quality. And I don't know if I have a word for that quality. Maybe not thinking about you. Exactly, thinking about others. And it's infectious. And when all of a sudden everyone's attitude is about just getting the job done and just helping each other and the teamwork, it's, it's really magical. It's really cool to watch. I like, I love, I love helping people. You know, I love the idea that like, I, I can make a difference here. But I really love meeting people that have like this similar kind of desire. Because it kind of reignites the fire inside of me. It's like if I, it feels very overwhelming of like I'm the only one that thinks this way. But knowing that there's other people that think like that, um, allows me to be a better person. It kind of regains, it gives me more hope and gives me faith in humanity, you know, that there's other good people out there. Seeing how All Hands works in the international capacity versus the uh, domestic, so they actually hire a lot of people that are local from the local community there. So we worked alongside staff and volunteers who are Nepali, and then they also hired locals to cook our meals for us. And so a lot of the, I love how they integrated the local community. I was blown away by my experience in, in St. Thomas. I, I came in expecting kind of a more traditional um, service opportunity where you show up during the day, 
you do your work, then you go back home to your, your, your hotel or your home and wash your hands and get back at it the next day. With all hands, it's, it's really more of a, a community of people that have all decided, I want to make this my life. I want to help people that are at their biggest need, and I want to make a difference in rebuilding some of these communities that have been affected by disaster. It's more of a, a lifestyle with all hands. Every resource they have is going towards the mission, and they're not stopping until it's finished. I learned that it's gratifying to help someone else, regardless of money or experience, knowledge, like being able to walk in and say, yeah, I don't know what this is, but I can help you fix the problem or at least get you to a next stage um, is incredibly gratifying. For me. If somebody asks you, should I do it? Should I, should I just go and try it? Mm -hmm. What would you say? Oh, 100%. Why? Um, just because, I mentioned earlier, people come down for different reasons. You know, everyone wants to help people, but some people, it's like, you know, they want to help people, but they also need some time. They need to figure themselves out. Or we've had situations where people have just, we're escaping kind of a toxic environment at home. I just needed to get out, I needed to put some good back in the world. I'd absolutely do it. There's Why? Nice people, you know, interesting people, you learn a lot, you give back, you know, makes, makes you happy to give back. And, uh, you know, just putting yourself out there is a really important form of self-care too, you know. If you want to volunteer with an organization, it's, it's a good organization to volunteer with. They, they have a good program. I say please do it. I mean, it's just, uh, it's an experience you can't really speak to. It's hard to put into words. Um, but I think when you get a little bit of a taste of it and, and you, you, you're doing good and you're, you know why you're here, and uh, um, there's, it's, it's hard to explain. It really is. I just, I, I, there's so many people back home that I'm, I, I feel like would love to do this work and I, I can't wait to go back there and like, have a sort of testimony about it and uh, encourage them to serve in some capacity. But All Hands and Hearts has really been great. It's, it's, it's been incredible to work with them and, and, and see how their mission works and, and their organizational strategies. And again, like I said, willingness to teach because I think that's what people really strive to have is just this opportunity to learn and grow in some capacity, because otherwise, you know, we just stay stagnant. And if we can learn from each other and grow from each other, I think uh, we're doing good things. Do you think you're coming back? I think definitely, uh, definitely. I want to, absolutely, yes. I say you should do it. Why? Um, for one, you're helping somebody that might not get that help. And two, you're just, uh, I can't stress enough, you're probably gonna meet some people that you won't meet anywhere else. So I get to see a different side of people also that I wouldn't see in like the outside world. I think that it's very, you have to try really hard to, to like not have a good time um, in terms of the experience, in terms of what you get out of it. Um, there's definitely some like long and hard days, but it's all incredibly worth it at the end of the day. You're helping these people, um, you know, people who are in their darkest moments. Um, you know, uh, affected by natural disasters. And you're also like helping yourself because you're meeting all, you're meeting fantastic people. And like every time I meet someone new, like I take a little bit of them with me, you know, whether it's like their personality or their jokes or what, like whatever it is, their work ethic. Um, it's, I mean, and this is just the perfect environment to do that. Um, it's, a, it's a good place to be. If you, somebody asks you, should I volunteer? What would you tell them? Absolutely. What? I guarantee you will get more than you give, and that's what I've experienced. I, I sometimes feel guilty coming on these trips because um, I know I get more than I give, and so balancing that, but it's just, it's, it's totally worth it. <laughs> well, why do you think it's, 
even though coming from different backgrounds and different histories, they all click or they all feel so connected. When you put people in a position where they have an opportunity to learn from each other and um, have a way, uh, I think most people, honestly, most people want to help people, they just don't know how. And when you put in an organized uh, direction, I think people are uh, able to tap into that more easily and uh, they're more than willing to do so. I think absolutely if everybody knew how to help, mm -hmm. they would help. We're all here for the same reason. And uh, if, you, if you, we don't agree politically or something, that's not something that we talk about. We talk about what we do and we do what we do. And uh, so I, th I think it's just because we're all focused on the same objective. I think that's what makes it work. I think that comes down to it that we're all here for the same reason as to help people. Um, so I mean that's kind of, that's what brought everyone here or I would imagine most people, some people might have different reasons, but everyone's here to help people and you have kind of have that shared dynamic and, and you have differences uh, and it's, you know, nice to learn from people and nice to you know, hear people's stories but you all know you're here for to help people. You're all here for the same reason. Um, and that's kind of what binds everybody. I think we all are, even though we're different, we all have the same hearts. We all want to do the same thing. We're all here for the same purpose. Um, maybe some of us are here for personal development. Some of us are here for experience, but we're all here to help. I think every single person that comes has that angle to help someone else in need. It, it's, really, it's really simple. When you, I think it's when people work hard together and then they have to eat together, it's, you, you end up loving them. You know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty natural. I think that's what makes people feel connected. Um, it's very character, it's a lot of character building stuff. There's the truck. When you got involved with all hands and hearts, and now, do you think you are the same person? This has definitely touched me in a different kind of way. I mean, I do a lot of service work, and I, I, I really feel like that that is my life, is to live a life of service. But uh, um, like I said, I have the resources to do so, but uh, I think, yeah, it's a, it's a different kind of service to the military, definitely. And it's so positive and so incredible as far as like how people talk to each other and um, love each other and support each other and really want to know like how was your day and how was that project and like hey we started that project how's it going now like a real genuine interest which is it's you it's like second to none I mean you really can't pay people to work this hard you know you just yeah. can't it's allowed me a vehicle to think about myself in a different way. It's forced, it's forced me to think about myself in a different way. How so? It's just, it's not just about um, me. It's not about like my job or my social bubble. I like to view this as this is my social bubble. This is my like social life. And so I go to work and then for fun, I can come volunteer for someone. I also do other things for fun too, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, I, I like to imagine that that going out and, how did I put this? Uh, using my privilege to try to benefit others instead of just myself. The more you do this experience, are you the same person? No. <laughs> Why? Um. Every trip I grow. Every trip is different. Um, and every trip has its challenges and also has its family that goes along with it. Every project I gain someone who 
I just really truly feels like a family member. And even if it's one person, some trips, it's 10 people. Um, but that, I, I, I really learn an immense amount on every project. Is that what makes you come back every time? Yeah. I've, uh, I've changed a tremendous amount. Um, each project I've changed. Um, and it serves as a, a really great point for like comparison with an older version of myself. And also it serves as a catalyst for evolving as a person. Um, it's been really phenomenal. Uh, my very first project, I was very tightly wound because um, it was very intense to just all of a sudden just be a part of this big family and you having to be vulnerable to, you know, let people in and make jokes and, you know, volunteer for cooking for 50 or 60 people or whatever it is. Um, but as I've done other projects since then, I've loosened up and um, I've gotten a pretty good idea of like what the flow should be and um, how to help out and, you know, um, I think being a staff member, a former staff member really helps because the staff make this whole organization run and, um, any opportunity that I can help them out or make them smile or, you know, is, is huge. When you joined um, All Hands, what state of mind were you in that you say, I have to do That's ice cream. It's, it's a lot due to my age. I'm, I'm more secure in my, my life, uh, financially, emotionally, everything. So this is the time where I just feel like I have time to, to give. Of course, I've always thought about it, but you know, always been too busy having to work those hours at work, raise the kids. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is my time in life where uh, things have mellowed out and I have more time to do this type of stuff. Is it I'm going to help or I'm probably going to do something to get in trouble with? <laughs> Might as well put my energy towards okay. something good. Yeah. I like that. I went to the St. Thomas and the British Virgin Islands with my mom. Um, with your mom? Yeah. So you took your mom? Yeah. <laughs> it's the first day and then right away you tell me I'll do it again. Oh, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yeah. You know, I felt pretty comfortable because uh, I was in good hands. There was always someone ready to teach me what to do. Uh, I didn't have any experience personally, but you know, I never felt that I was overwhelmed by anything or that I was, you know, asked to do something I wasn't comfortable with. And by doing stuff for other people, I just I find things out for myself that I wasn't really looking for, you know. After this project is over, I'll definitely volunteer with all hands in the future.